Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist. In this series, we've touched on culture and how culture influences the way we think, what we think, and even, even how we think. This is based on a, a, a quote from Stephen Jay Gould that says that um, not all reasonable people think the same way. Not all reasonable people see the same thing, but theory habit, prejudice, and culture all influence the way I perceive things and the way I see things through my personal grid of, of interpretation. What we're in in this series is on worldview, and we've, we've looked at theory and how it also um, parallels almost the concept of worldview, but now we're going to be going into worldview and how it relates to another concept, not just theory, but uh, through my studies, um, I've had to uh, do a lot of research or a lot of reading on, on philosophy. And I started coming up with some, some questions because the, the basic questions of philosophy um, have to do with um, our, the big questions of life has to do with who am I? Um, where did I come from? Where am I going? And uh, what do we do? Where, where do we get knowledge from? Where do we get, uh, how should we live? How? And this philosophy then, um, studying it, I, I started becoming a little confused because I thought those were almost the, the same questions that worldview uh, aims to answer. And that's what we had seen in the previ previous lecture, is that worldview is a, a concept that seeks to answer, uh, is a fundamental basis of looking out and answering those questions about reality, about who I am, about where I'm going. So my concern, or concern is just doubt, has been what is the relationship? What, do, what is the relationship? So how does the concept of worldview, wealth and chung, relate to the concept of philosophy? What, what is the difference between the two? And I, I always needed clear breaking guidelines to understand um, when to apply, when not, like in the, the three concepts of, of wealth. Uh, the, the Welt build, the Welt and Chang, and the Welt model. When and where do you apply? And where is the dividing line between them? And, and frankly, in a lot of the, the writers and the philosophers, they, they have different dividing lines. And so it gets kind of difficult sometimes to understand. And sometimes you just have to draw the line and say, okay, this is the way I'm going to use it. Um, but philosophy, what does philosophy mean? What, what's the definition of philosophy? And this is what I found. It's from the Florida State uh, University Department. It says, philosophy in a broad sense is an activity people undertake when they seek to understand fundamental truths about themselves, the world in which they live, and their relationships to the world and to each other. Uh, okay, well that sounds a lot like uh, worldview. It sounds, uh, sounds like their, 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 their aim is, has the same goals, the same ends to them. But philosophy is a complicated concept, and, and I don't pretend to understand it all, but what I did have to understand a bit was, was the breakdown of philosophy. Not understand all the intricate ins and outs of philosophy and philosophers, but what, when you say philosophy, what does that mean? And uh, one is, is philosophy, is, is the love of wisdom, or seeking of wisdom. And philosophy can be broken down into, well again, it's just kind of like worldview, it can be broken down into several different options. But the majority of the options that I understand is there are four branches to philosophy. So philosophy is the, the head title, and then there's four branches under philosophy. And the first branch is called epistemology. And epistemology has to do with knowledge. How do we get it? From where do we get it? And so it is actually involved in two areas of thinking. 
And uh, so one is the source of reliable knowledge. What is my source of reliable knowledge? There are, again, various different opinions, but there seems to be one general opinion is that there are four general sources for reliable knowledge from which we can base our thinking processes on. The first source they call intuitive knowledge. And intuitive knowledge is based on what it says, intuition. But it includes faith or beliefs or personal experience. So that can be your source. What is your source of knowledge? Is it intuitive knowledge? I just know it. Um, I believe it. Or the second one is authoritarian knowledge. Now that second one would, would fit a certain um, pattern, cultural pattern. Um, it'd be a non-Western type of pattern. Authoritarian knowledge, what's that mean? Well, that this source refers to information that is gotten from an outside external source, okay? And that could be um, articles, research papers, it could be experts, it could be revelation. Okay, so as a believer, um, my source of reliable knowledge would include, or would be the primary source, would be revelation. There is now a third source, which is called logical knowledge. Logical knowledge it comes from, is based on human reason, human logic. And so the source increases knowledge through the use of human reasoning, through the process of reasoning. So we have uh, intuition, we have authoritarian, and we have logical knowledge. The fourth category is called empirical knowledge. And empirical knowledge is based on the five senses, the human senses, on observation, on whatever we can experience. So those are the four general categories of sources of reliable knowledge. It, intuition, authority, logic, and empirical, empiricism, empirical knowledge. We're going to go over those again coming back up soon, but that is epistemology. That's epistemology A. Epistemology B, I've, di I've divided into two, two sectors, epistemology. The, the second one is B, which is the methods that I use to get to reliable knowledge. In other words, first I choose my source of reliable knowledge, then I choose my methods of how to, how to get there. The second category, second branch of philosophy is called metaphysics. And I tried to understand what that means and come to find out uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to figure out what that means. Uh, metaphysics, uh, some say before physics, above physics, beyond physics. And uh, I guess really what it's all about is Aristotle had written a whole series on physics and then he wrote something later on something that was on first principles. Uh, and so his, his compiler that was putting th stuff together said, okay, physics, uh, that this is his first work, and uh, now this is after his physics, uh, which was called his metaphysics. And so metaphysics uh, can mean a lot of things uh, to a lot of people. Basically, what it uses, what it's used for is to what is real? What is reality? What do you explain as the nature of reality. That is the area of metaphysics. And this has a, a interesting categories. Not everyone includes all the same categories, but they are included. There are three categories under metaphysics, and the first one is even theology. You have to do something with God. And so what do we do with him? What's your concept of him? Is he, is there one? And what is he or she? Can she, he or she intervene into your world system or not? So in theology, in uh, theology is below in the area of metaphysics. Now, a more general category that is more well known among metaphysics is called ontology. And ontology is the basic beliefs, basic beliefs, about existence, about being, um, about 
the, the humans, about us, about mind, about matter, about, and so about our existence, ontology. That is, defines um, what we think and how we are and uh, about the, the dualism or monism, about the mind-matter duality. The number third level, or number third involved in metaphysics, is called the universal science. And this is kind of what Aristotle was after, was the first principles, was how did everything begin? Where did it all come from? How did it unfold? How did it develop? And so it's kind of the origins question and so that is also an interest. So metaphysics is an interesting area um, of which not everybody agrees with what is contained in that or even if we should be using that. But metaphysics is a part, one of the branches of philosophy. The third branch of philosophy is called logic. And that is the application of your epistemology, your source, your methods, your metaphysics, and logically applying that to a situation to generate um, reliable, reliable knowledge. So that is logic. Number four is axiology. Axiology has to do with values, has to do with ethics. And so after you've added everything up, it all comes down to what I value. What are my ethics for, for doing certain things in different situations? And so that is axiology. So those are the, the, the four branches of philosophy. And now to look at those four branches in this house again is to um, look to see how the four branches of philosophy correspond to the ground level in that there is no ground level. In philosophy, it doesn't start at ground level. In philosophy, it starts at the, well, I start at the, the source, epistemology. What is my source of knowledge? Where do I go? Do I go to, um, is it logic? Is it empiric, empiricism? Is it intuitiveness, intuition? Or is it author, authority? And in my house, I would, I would go to authority. I would, it would be built on, on revelation. So epistemology starts at the base. The next metaphysics has to do with the basic beliefs that comes out. So the metaphysics is the ontology. What are my basic beliefs about reality? And so that's ontology, but that's under metaphysics. Then the system of thought, then the epistemology again, but it's methods. How do I now apply my, from my source, through my basic beliefs, my methods? That's epistemology. Back to how do we get knowledge? And it's through the methods. Then once we have the methods in place, then we have a logic that's produced, a system that is practiced producing more reliable knowledge. So that is through logic. And then up to the top, we have our values and ethics, which is axiology. And so now you can see how philosophy corresponds to the house that we had seen earlier of worldview. So this house we're gonna be using through the rest of the series um, but it's just a, a house to visually represent the sequence of, of philosophy and the different branches of it and how they go together. Thank you again for accompanying me. And uh, we're Tim and Holly. If you'd like to correspond with us, we're at doubleroadrover.com or at thn.academia at gmail.com. Again, thanks for accompanying me. See you next time.